The serial buffer lets you control when serial or analog signals pass through to other symbols. The serial buffer uses the speed key SBUF and can be added to your program by expanding the serial folder under logic symbols and then clicking and dragging the serial buffer over to the detail view. The symbol has an expandable number of inputs, which allows signals to be transmitted to their corresponding outputs after the enable line has gone high. One input-output pair can contain a serial or an analog signal, which is why the line is green. And there's really only one rule that tells you when data will be transmitted from one input to an output. Only data that is sent after the enable line goes high will be transmitted to the output. So any signals that exist on the input lines before the enable line goes high will not be transmitted as the enable line goes high. And while the enable line is high, if the same signal is passed to the same input multiple times, the same signal will be retransmitted to the output every single time. This and the signal transmission behavior at the enable line sets the serial buffer apart from the analog buffer. So let's build a quick example program. I'm going to add an analog initialize, two serial IOs, a make string permanent, three serial analog one shots, and a toggle. The analog initialize will take two inputs from the X panel, have parameters 100D and 300D, and its output will go to the serial buffer and the X panel. The first serial IO will take another two inputs from the X panel, have parameters of first string MSP and second string MSP. Its output will go to the make string permanent, the serial buffer, and the X panel. The second serial IO will take two other inputs from the X panel, and its parameters will be third string and fourth string. Its output will go to the serial buffer and the X panel. All right, so the serial buffer's outputs will go to the inputs of the serial analog one-shots and the X panel. The buffer's enable line is going to be driven by the toggle, whose input will also come from the X panel. And finally, all three one-shots will have a pulse time of half a second, and their outputs will also feed back to the X panel. All right, now let's compile and upload. So with the serial buffer disabled, nothing happens on its outputs when we trigger any part of its inputs. And when we enable the buffer, also nothing happens. And this is because of rule number one. Analog and serial data is only transmitted if the data is sent after the buffer has been enabled, even for the serial strings that are connected to the make string permanent. So any data that we transmit now that the enable line is high gets propagated to the serial buffer's output. And if I retransmit any serial string or analog data, you'll notice that the light next to the string or data turns on, indicating that the string or analog value is repropagated from the serial buffer's output. So when can you use the serial buffer? A specific use case is with the serial RAM. The serial RAM only allows you to store one serial string for each available storage slot. If you have multiple items stored in the SRAM, you can use the serial buffer to ensure that you're only using data that's been stored in a specific slot. All right, well that wraps it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching, liking, and subscribing. We'll see you in the next one.